I have been seeing so many stories lately in the media about different things happening at churches and it is just so disheartening seeing all of this as a person who has grown up in the church. I'm from the Bible Belt. My granddad was a pastor. I have plenty of uncles that are pastors. And so it is so sad seeing what the church has become these days. And every time I see like one of these news clips, it just reminds me of the quote that the devil's biggest accomplishment is convincing everybody that he is not real. And you can just see that in every single one of these clips. So today we're going to get into some of the topics that are really like plaguing the church right now and just not a good look, especially for people who want to come to Christ and they're seeing all this. And, you know, as baby Christians, you really need the teachings of the Bible and it can be hard to interpret the Bible. So people come to church to truly learn and actually get that insight that they can't get necessarily by themselves reading it it's kind of like school but now it's turned more into like a concert an event that you go to and nobody's learning anything I truly think these people are walking away from church and they just crossed it off their to-do list for the week and they absolutely know nothing if I was to go up to them and quiz them about anything in the bible they would not know a thing so let's get into some of these stories Watch this false prophet steal ten thousand dollars real quick. Hey. 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 Papa only saw ten. Ten thousand. This is how we will know. Papa, this is how we'll know. Shh. Read your Bibles. This is how we will know that the ten are the ten and others will meet themselves out. <laughs> Somebody said, Wow. <laughs> Grab a seed of 1,000. 1,000 to get married. If you have it, move forward. Move forward. She got robbed. She got robbed. <laughs> Sound right here. A seed for 1,000. The 10 people come. I ain't got Grab it for the you. The 10. The 10. Oh. The ten. Ah, you quit your blessing. And that's for the people watching. They, they sow 1,000. They get, they get, um, get, they get married. Their spouse arrives. Witchcraft. Yeah, don't don't try to sow next week. Sow your seed now. He wants that ten thousand right now, not next week. The service sucks, but you're going to do it after service. Okay, stand. I just don't listen to me, guys. Listen, listen to me, children of God. Don't. You know, I'm following what God has spoken to me. God didn't speak to you. That that's not God's voice. If don't make a vow to God that you cannot accomplish. It's dangerous. That's enough. You know, if you defend him in the comments, you just as bad as him. Like for real. I don't care. That's crazy. If you Call it out. Something and you don't do it, Let it be known. Grab a seat of one thousand. Grab a seat. Papa, can I just open for the other ones who also have? <laughs> Man, you asked me. Ain't no mind calling no other man, no papa. First of all, you asked your granddaddy. First of all, when I anoint you, all of you, when you go home for this small time, you're going to go on your sink. You're going to open your water, running water. You're going to wash your face seven times. Don't ever. If, if, uh, if somebody ever tell you to do something like that and, and step by step, that's sorcery. Yep. What makes them different from the witches and warlocks that we actually see and they show themselves? Mm -hmm. This is one in sheep's clothing. Ooh, kitty. This ain't no different. Ain't no different. He's asking you to bring something because in order for something to happen. Exactly. The false prophets have been trying to take over the church for a while now, so I don't know how we actually let them into the church. They have been up and down my timelines lately, and every single time I try to like say don't recommend this channel, I promise you 10 more show up the next time I open up the app. So I don't know how to get them off my timeline because they just, I don't know how many there are. But they keep showing up and I'm just like, what well, don't you understand that I'm not interested about this? But they always, well, most of them always talk about marriage this, marriage that, kingdom spouses, kingdom marriage. 
I don't really know where this all originated from or who started this, but I see this as like a main point of how they get in because a lot of people desire marriage and a lot of them will use scripture to back up what they're saying. So a lot of them seem like they are the real deal and it's very easy to fall into deception. At one point, I was listening to them too because they just sounded so convincing. Now, there are some that you can tell off the bat, like they are fake. Like they'll be like, okay, you need to sew. Um, I'm hearing $75 right now if you want to lock into this word. So, um, so $75. Then the next video will be like, so 25 so 100 So it was easy to pick out some false people, but there are some people who are just really good at hiding themselves and you just cannot tell there's also a lot of fear mongering that goes on with this because a lot of them would bring up the two prophets from revelation and how they're going to come onto the earth and if you speak bad about these two prophets then you will essentially die so they're like fear mongering like do not speak against me or you're going to be punished because I'm the real deal so there's just a lot going on there and honestly it could be a whole separate video because there's just so much there but honestly if you just test the fruit of the spirit and I did not know what this meant for the longest time but it means just see what they're actually producing so a lot of them are preaching about prophetic marriages and their spouses and they all say that they have the same promise now they all say their husband's coming they know who their husband is either they have a prodigal husband or they know who their husband is and it's been years they it's been years and they have not met their husband but they're telling you how to better yourself get a closer relationship with god do this do that to prepare for your husband's like but you've been waiting for years you've been waiting for years and no man has shown up then there's also other ones who they'll bring somebody on and they're like oh this is my spouse yeah god told the both of us this is my spouse we're engaged we're getting married and i promise you i've seen two prophets now and both of them have just wiped this man completely off their page and they are no longer engaged so if you've been putting in all this work you're supposed to hear directly from god y'all have both heard this message from god why are y'all not married why are you not married already? Because you shouldn't have to have a prodigal situation according to y'all's terms. So y'all need to really be careful with these prophets. There's just so much deception, but it's so easy to fall into that deception. And then I had another video I wanted to show about this whole sewing for marriage thing, but I could not find it for the life of me. I don't know. Maybe they had it wiped from the internet, but some lady had posted a video um, exposing this one church and it was seriously like deal or no deal. Like that's, that's the best way I can describe it. It was like deal or no deal. It was like a conference and they had a bunch of women standing around in a circle and it was this assistant lady and she had like a bodyguard with her. I'll just, I'll call him a bodyguard because that's how he was standing there. Like very weird. And she was just going around the circle, like prophesizing over people. And she got to one lady and one lady expressed her desire for marriage. I kid you not, this man comes up behind the lady, uh, comes up behind the assistant, hands the assistant a phone. The assistant answers the phone. Like I said, very deal or no deal like. And she, I guess she's talking to the head prophet. And the head prophet's like, oh, she needs to sew $4,000 today to meet her husband. So she tells this to the lady and the lady's like, I sewed 5000 last week. And the assistant had the nerve to tell this lady, well, that was last week. This is this week. If you want to release your husband and finally be married, you need to sew 4000 this week. There is no way on this green earth I am paying $9,000 to some so-called prophet just to meet a man. Just to meet a man. You are paying $9,000 just hoping a man is going to come out of nowhere and you're just going to trust that this man is your husband. Honestly, you pay these people $9,000, they can produce a man. I'm sure there are plenty of people out here they can find and pay him a little bit of money and tell him to come pretend to be your husband. Like, what are you actually doing? Like, the lady looked a little skeptical, so I hope she really followed her gut instinct there and did not pay them any more money. 
also why do you have that much money to spend on just meeting somebody I do not know I don't know how these prophets became the head of the church like where's the preachers why are there just prophets running the church now there's just so much wrong with this I just don't even know where to start and then the whole thing about like wash your face seven times my dad actually has a prophet as a preacher I think he's in a cult do I have any proof for that no I also do not care what he's doing but he had that prophet prophesy over me and told me I had a spirit husband and I had to drink this tea for seven days like it was so ritualistic he was like you can't drink it on your time of the month all this stuff you need to drink it at this time seven days for a week and then the spirit husband will be removed from you and when I tell you this tea literally looked like a bag of dirt I I was so ready to get out of there I was so ready to get out of there so y'all need to stop it with these false prophets if God has a husband for you you do not need to pay a thousand ten thousand dollars to get a husband like what is that actually doing what is that actually doing? Are you actually prepared for this man? How, are you? Do you have a relationship with God? Like, why are we just paying money for a man? If it was that easy, everybody would pay some money. Come on now. Please do not fall into this trap. Did y'all hear about the men's church conference that had a male stripper? Oh, we in white folks church business today. Let me tell you what happened. All right, this is the Stronger Men's Conference. Okay, they had a male stripper. They had monster trucks. They had fire they had everything okay so the stripper man okay he ripped his shirt off he does his like he don't strip in the sensual way but he got his shirt off and he 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 climbed a pole with a sword in his mouth okay got the sword put it down his gullet deep throat in the sword of the spirit he goes up the pole okay does a death drop the men are like this is great eagles beers ha okay comes down <laughs> fire and monster trucks so then this new man pastor mark driscoll he get up and he don't like it he got something to say i've been up since one o'clock in the morning the reason i'm hoarse is i have been praying for you and my heart is very burdened for you and i want to be very careful with this and it's not what i want to say but the jezebel spirit has already been here Jezebel spirit opened our event. Now I love a good rebuke, not rebuke. He said, I'm hoarse because I've been praying for y'all. Because the Jezebel spirit opened it up. So he goes on, and then another pastor didn't catch his name. He didn't want to get too deep into the white folks' business. But he tells him, You're done. You're done. He doesn't know and I got his humble. He decided. And then he swallowed a sword. And Jesus cried, okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. After he told him he's done, he's like, I, re I received that. I'm gone. Because I don't want to have no part of the Just Bell Spirit anyway. And I'm just saying, I love a good Cirque du Soleil. I go down to Las Vegas, me and my wife, we get down our pictures and, and a, a, a video of the Cirque du Soleil. They do fire and swords and stuff. I ain't never seen it at a men's conference. I ain't never, I, I thought when I heard this, I was like, oh, I thought it was gonna be a woman stripping. No, man. But the thing is, it's called the Stronger Men's Conference. The male stripper is showing you he's strong. He's got core strength because Jesus is at his core. And he can do all things through Christ who strengthens him, including going up the pole with a sword in his mouth because he's a stronger man. Weak man couldn't do it. So do y'all want him to be on theme or not? Now, what the monster trucks have to do with it? I don't know. I don't know how you got monster trucks in the whole situation, but I don't care either because I like monster trucks. Never seen him inside a church. Only seen him at a monster truck rally. But the devil is a monster. He'll be rebuked, cast down. So let's 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 blow up the monster truck. Why is the fire there? Hell is hot. Lake of fire. Who? What else? What was going on in these churches on Super Bowl Sunday? Oh my goodness! We got people in church 
kicking Bibles, punting Corinthians across the stage. Then we got people in church trying to be Miley Cyrus, swinging on a wrecking ball. I just... <sighs> What on God's green earth is going on? Do we just not fear God anymore? And then I can't imagine attending one of these services and having to see it in person. Because baby, I'm bewildered by just the videos. No church is perfect whatsoever. I understand that completely. But some things, it's just a no-go. It's a red flag. That's not the church you need to be going to. That's not the type of leadership you should want to be under. And it's just so sad because I'm like, what pastors are letting this happen? Who's thinking this stuff is an okay idea like who could look at either one of those clips and say yeah that's it that's okay it's like people are treating god like a concept people are treating god like he used to exist and it's just awful to see the effects of that like y'all know better and it brings this bible verse to my mind it's romans 1 and 32 it says and it's not as if they don't know better they know perfectly well they're spitting in god's face and they don't care Worse, they hand out prizes to those who do the worst things best. I really just can't fathom it. What part of that is pleasing God? What part of this is honoring God? What part of this is leading people to Christ? If anything, when those who are in between about following God see this type of stuff, they're probably thinking, why would I waste my time on Christianity? This looks like a joke. And honestly, this is why sometimes I don't really prefer when churches try to incorporate things like that into their service. At my church, the entire service was focused on Jesus, period. We prayed, we praised, and we worshiped. And we got spiritually fed. God was the center, God was the focus. But sometimes when churches try to include what's going on in the world, they lose sight of Jesus. They're no longer glorifying God. God is no longer the focus. It's so much wrong here that I have so much to say, but at the same time, it's so much wrong here that I have nothing to say. I'm at a loss for words. My favorite is Chinese food and ketchup. Why are you so bothered? Who gonna clean it? Yeah, this is just the house of God. It's just a house. It's just a house. Just a house. Who cares? <laughs> I lift my hands in the sanctuary. I lift my hands to give you the glory. I lift my hands to give praise and we will praise you. <laughs> Don't care so much. It's just a temple. <laughs> Syrup all over the communion. Don't care so much. Over the Bible too. Acting like you care about this. Let me man, stop acting like this matters to you. On the picture, I need to do some artwork on the picture. See? Uh oh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, come on. Oh. Ooh. When I got into the mess, it affected the way I walk outside of it. This is a Subway sandwich or foot long? Dang. I hope I didn't hit a band member. It's just a temple. Stop acting bothered. You don't care, you don't care. We don't care about this. Ooh. 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 What'd you say? We get it. No, you don't. It's been 40 years. It's been 50 years. It's been 15 years of not caring about our temple. Why do you care about these eight chairs and these symbols of Christianity? 
when it's not even the place where the Holy Spirit is dwelling. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. Did I miss the memo? The memo where apparently Christians were told to disrespect the Bible in church all month this month. Cause what in tarnation is going on? I literally just made that video about that church that was kicking the Bible across the stage for the Super Bowl. The Corinthian punters. But now Mike Todd wanna pour syrup and whipped cream on the Bible and treat it like a pancake stack at IHOP? Here's the clip. Syrup all over the communion. Don't care so much. Over the Bible too acting like you care about this. Let me man. What'd you say? We get it. No, you don't. It's been 40 years. Imagine if this was the Sunday that you finally convinced one of your friends or one of your unbelieving family members to come to church. And then the pastor pulls out syrup and ready whip. It's like we're doing everything in church with these Bibles, except reading them, except teaching from them. Like I get what his analogy was trying to be, but baby, it don't take all that. That same point that he was trying to convey could have been made without doing any of that. And look, I'm not trying to hop on the choo-choo train of hating on Mike Todd, because when I was a baby believer, when when I had freshly given my life to Christ, I was watching his sermons all the time and they were truly helping me. But now I'm not a spiritual baby no more. Now I've moved from spiritual milk to spiritual meat. And something I've realized is this. You would think that after his Easter play chaos and that spit hit the fan sermon, that he would be like, okay, I need to reevaluate what I'm doing. I've learned from those mistakes. But no, things just keep getting added to the list. It's no longer a mistake, it's a choice. Like, is it too boring to just preach the word of God without all the theatrics, without all the gimmicks? Like, what part of the Bible is not enough for you to where you feel as if you have to go to all these extravagant measures? Pause, let me not even say extravagant. Let me say these disrespectful measures just to get the point across. Like I said in my last video about this stuff, this is why people treat Christianity like a joke because the church is full of clownery. I was literally having a conversation with a friend the other day and he was saying one side of his family was Muslim and his other side was Christian. And he was like, I ain't gonna lie. It seems like the Muslims are so much more serious about their faith. They don't play no games about it. It's treated with more reverence. It's treated more sacredly. People ain't as comfortable disrespecting them. And when he said that to me, I wasn't a lick of surprised. Cause look at what Christian churches are presenting to the world. Look at the image we're portraying. We're not giving people God we're giving people entertainment. We're giving people a reason to laugh at us. And I was watching a video from Ruslan the other day and he was showing these people out the country somewhere. I forgot where, but they were receiving Bibles for the first time and they were crying. They were kissing these Bibles. I'm getting chills. They were dang near fighting each other, trying to get the Bibles because that's how much it meant to them. That's how deeply they see it as a privilege and an honor just to get their hands on God's word. But then we got people kicking it. Then we got people pouring syrup on it, defiling it, dishonoring it, disrespecting it. There is no reverence for God anymore. There is no reverence for his word. There is no reverence for how we conduct ourselves in church. None of that. I'm flabbergasted. I think it's time that we start taxing the churches. No church should want to, let alone have the funds to create such an elaborate production. Money put into that should have gone to like feeding food insecure families, housing homeless people, helping families pay for medical bills. For a very brief time when I was living in Northern Indiana as a kid, my mom took us to a mega church. I'm talking a mega church. And they used to take missionaries to do service trips in Puerto Rico. My family is from Puerto Rico. My mom at first loved this until she talked to people who did mission work in Puerto Rico with our church. Missionaries that would go with at a really nice resort and then they take an air conditioned bus to these like rural areas and help people build a church not homes for them a church they'd have locals help build the church now when the missionaries were ready for lunch break the missionaries would go on the bus air conditioned and eat their lunch did the locals do that no they did not the locals continued to work because they didn't have lunch to eat you're probably asking yourself oh the missionaries then have them come on the bus and they shared their lunch with them no they did not missionaries would escape the heat fill their bellies with food and drink and watch them work from the bus windows less than a quarter of the funds raised for these trips actually went to the mission of building a church, not feeding the people, building a church, not housing the people, building a church. The rest of the funds were spent on the beach resorts for the missionaries to stay at, feeding 
the missionaries and the air-conditioned bus right there and back. Churches get a tax break so they can help people out. Well, I'm sure there are Swifties out there that would be saved by Gospel Taylor Swift. I feel like those funds could have been used to do better, okay? Tax the churches. I think a lot of people have forgotten the purpose of church. Church is where you go to fellowship with other Christians, learn and grow in your relationship with God, and the pastor is supposed to be there like a teacher to lead and guide you to your salvation and teach you how to live in the way that God intended us to live. Now, with that being said, what is this? What are y'all doing? If you are a pastor that has to do all of this to have your congregation come or to get a message across to them or just to have people praise you for being a good pastor, you are in fact not a good pastor. You do not need any of this to reach God's people. All you need is scripture, the teachings from that scripture, and some just normal everyday examples to back it up. You know, like I said, the Bible, it can be hard to read. There's a lot of parables. It can be hard to understand sometimes, especially as a baby Christian. It can be hard to understand what exactly is going on. So people are coming to learn and understand. They want that knowledge. So give them an example of real life. What have you experienced? If you don't have a story to back up your teaching for the day, have somebody else come and give their testimony. Like as Christians, you should be giving your testimony anyways, because it helps other people going through the same thing. And it, as long as you're backing it up with scripture too, like it double reinforces that whole message and it gives people something to grasp in a sense that we can understand in today's age. Now, I feel like that is what Michael Todd is trying to do with his examples, trying to help people understand, but he's just doing too much at this point. Like I said, just leave it at a simple testimony. You could have gave a simple story of your body's a temple, yet you're filling it up with all this junk that's going to cause cancer or diabetes, high cholesterol. You didn't need to come up with the whole set and literally waste food and throw it at the wall you didn't need to put syrup on the bible like you're doing too much you're doing way too much and he does too much a lot and at this point I think he likes the attention and I think at one point he was a really good pastor but pride can easily take over people this is where the concept of don't make everybody famous comes into play because there's a lot of people and you'll see them in their beginning stages. They are so humble. They are the nicest people. They're so talented. A lot of people like them. But as soon as you, as soon as they make it to a certain level, they just become these people you don't even recognize. And I think that's the point where he has made it to. He's just, I don't think he recognizes himself at this point. He's in straight pride and he just he likes the attention at this point and he he's not going to stop until people stop going to his church and people stop watching him you do not need all of this to get a message across i'm sorry but you you don't you just need the bible where's the scripture to back this up anyways i'm looking at a bunch of food being thrown at the wall where's the scripture I do not like pastors that do not bring out the Bible not once while talking to me. If you don't bring up the Bible not once during an hour long sermon, then what are you doing? You are a motivational speaker at that point. You have to bring up the Bible in a sermon like that should be a basic requirement that everybody knows. And then all the production of these dancers and like this is not a concert this is church like I love seeing the enthusiasm of the choirs and I don't believe you need to be bored at church I do not think you have to be bored sitting in the pews not doing anything but some of this is just doing way too much this looks like more like a production or a concert and not really like a praise team 
Some of the worship teams that I really like to listen to are Elevation Worship, Bethel Music, and Maverick City Music. I listen to them almost every single day, and their music is very upbeat, very moving, but even when you watch like their worship videos, they do not have all this production going on. Like They may be big churches, but they still don't have any of this going on. They're just good. If you are good, you do not need all of that extra production factor. So you don't have to be bored. The music doesn't have to be like Down by the River, some old church country songs. You can have good music and you can have a lively crowd and a good time at church. But all that extraness just needs to be absolutely cut out. That's also a waste of money. That is money that could have went to the community. I always wonder when we are giving tithes and offering, where does this money go? So I like that my church always shows where they're actually putting the money to, like they're actually out there doing things with our donations and our tithes and offerings. Because there are some churches where I truly, I see nothing happening. Like my last church that I was at, I... I didn't really see a lot going on where I could truly feel like, yeah, my tithes and offerings are going to a good place. And so I think there should be like something where every single year the church shows you where did your tithes and offerings go to. Like they need to have some type of proof of, hey, this is what we did with the money. This is how we helped the community. This is how you helped help the community. Otherwise, please do not tell me my tithes and offerings are going towards this whole production. How is this glorifying God? Like I could have took my tithes and offerings and I could have went to the community myself and put this money back into the kingdom and help spread the gospel on my own. Like I'm not giving you my money to sit up here and throw some lavish production because you want some attention online because that's all this is. Y'all simply want attention and fame online and I don't know why we are also making pastors famous. I don't think pastors need to be famous. I'm sorry, but I don't think y'all need to be on the level of celebrities. I never understood why T.D. Jakes was on the level of celebrity, why he was hanging out with celebrities. It was very weird to me. Like, you are a pastor. You are not a celebrity. And with social media now and all of these online pastors... I think they're all just competing with each other to be more and more famous, to sell more and more books, books that we don't even know if they're actually following the things in them. I bought that whole, um, the, the weight, what was it? Megan Good and, um, her ex-husband. I bought that book. Now they're divorced. Once again, that was another couple that claimed they both heard from God and now they're divorced. So, um, y'all, what are we doing? If you did hear from God, why are you out of obedience now and now y'all are divorced? What what went wrong? Did y'all stop listening to him? Did you stop following his teachings? What happened? So yeah, I don't need all y'all's books. I, I truly don't. And y'all all don't need to be famous. Just teach your congregation and do what needs to be done. And then lastly, this church with the whole stripper pole and monster trucks I don't understand what's going on. Did anybody actually get up and preach at all during any of this? Like, or were y'all just watching this and you're like, yeah, I feel more strength in the spirit. Yeah, I feel myself getting stronger. Like, imagine a wife is like, my husband, he's a good man of God. He's a good man, Savannah. He's going to the church conference. He's going to come back rejuvenated in the spirit. He's going to come back leading our household in the most godliest of ways. And then you find out this is what he was doing there. You you find out this is what the, the convention was about. We would be dropping this church the next day. Because what is this? I I truly don't understand. And when that pastor got up there and started convicting them for doing all this stuff, the pastor saying, oh, you're out of line. You're out of line. That was the perfect moment right there to rebuke that man. Because what are y'all doing here? And then everybody cheering the pastor off the stage for saying that's wrong. Y'all better get it together. Y'all, y'all, we do not have that much time left. Y'all better get it together because... None of that was any good. All you needed was a Bible. That's all you needed was a Bible. Who even thought of this? 
y'all are doing too much. I just watched the juiciest multi-part series I've seen in a long time called Who the Fuck Church Did I Join? So this lady um, named Destiny, she deleted the videos, y'all. So I only got five parts. I watched five parts, went to go take a shower, came back, she deleted all the videos. I guess I guess she couldn't take the uh she couldn't take the heat in the kitchen. But I did get some notes on the first the first five parts I did watch. So supposedly um she was doing this lady's hair. Yada 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 come to find out the lady said she was separating from her husband. She followed the lady on Instagram. The, the lady pa uh posted about a pastor. Uh the girl followed uh followed the pastor's page. Her and the pastor start talking. Come to find out, she found out that it's the lady that she do hair's husband. Ooh, did that matter to her? No, because he said they are separated, and she did say that too. But anyway, let me not put my opinion in it. Let me just let me just tell y'all the tea. So she started um messing around with the man. He started sending her cash apps. Um, she get pregnant by him. Oh, what else happened? They start messing around. He he uh she gets an abortion. Supposedly he told her to keep the baby, make him the god dad. She come to find out he's sleeping with multiple multiple women in the church. What else happened? That's pretty much all I got. I don't know how it ended. So if y'all know how it ended, please let me know. But uh I'll tag the information here. I did all I could to find what I could okay. Oh yeah, yeah. The Leah Brown Lee is the wife's name. And the pastor name is William Brown Lee. And the wife had posted on here before about the story. I think she deleted her page too. Everybody deleted everything. So you put your business out there and then you take it back. So if y'all know anything else about this story, please let me know. Send me what y'all got because I'm invested. And they just, they gonna take all the tea away from us as soon as they put on the internet. But anyway, y'all have a good day. So from what I could gather, the reason why she was telling her side of the story, because the wife, because this is a screenshot on her page of the wife doing her own version of the story, where she left out a lot of details that made it seem like she was the reason for the divorce. When in reality, the pastor's wife started off as a side piece, her damn self. He had been married and had two kids with his original wife. He was cheating, he got her pregnant, he divorced his wife, and married her his the the new divorced wife anyways so the husband had lied on her and made it seem like they were doing the cheating back when she was doing the hair and not when she became a member of the church sorry i'm all over the place um i usually have screenshots and all that other stuff but i didn't think she was gonna take it down before i woke up she took she actually took full responsibility she got sick and tired of the pastor doing sermons on her and she wasn't going to the church anymore and it was still getting back to her and um people were talking about what she did at other churches and she was mad because the pastor had slept with multiple other women in the church prior to her and after her and also the wife was also cheating she ended up cheating on him with the pastor's married best friend this is one of the strangest things i've seen happen at a church and there's a lot more here that people are not talking about so if you're not familiar the pastor at solid rock church in south carolina announced that his wife had been unalived after a sermon i'm gonna have you stand up and i'm gonna make an announcement and um, after the announcement i'm gonna ask that you um you leave church quietly and, and don't talk about the announcement here in the building, please, if you can, so y'all can stand to your feet. Before I make the announcement, I also want to say that um, my request to you is that you will continue to come to church and serve and give um, for the next, you know, a little bit. Because I don't want to have, I'm taking a little bit of a break and I don't want to have to worry about the church. My break may be a few days, a few weeks, I don't know. Um, I got a call late last night. My wife has passed away. And yeah, it was, it was self-induced and it was uh, up in North Carolina. And um, we're going to have a funeral for her next Sunday here at 3 p.m. And so um, it's, it's all I can, yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of going on um, adrenaline right now. So y'all pray for me and my kids and everybody. And uh, she was, she wasn't, y'all knew that she wasn't well mentally and that uh, she needed medicine that was hard to get to her. And so um, I'm sure there'll be more details to come. But um, just keep our family in your prayers. Some important background here is that 48 hours before she passed away, she served him divorce and no contact papers. This is obviously very suspicious and something I wanted to understand because if you grew up in the church, you know that you can tell a lot about a person, especially a man, based off of how they view authority and what they teach about authority from the Bible. If you want to hear uh, the voice of God concerning your home, 
you need to go to the husband or the head of the household. Now, I'm not saying that doesn't mean that the wife and him are not equal. I just mean that's the position God put him in. The husband's job is to really hear God for the direction of the household and to bring the wife into agreement with that. If you want to hear clear direction of the audible voice of God on your church, you have to go to the senior pastor. That's just how it works. And, and I think the problem we have a lot of times, especially in America, is that we know that the husband makes mistakes, we know that our boss makes mistakes, we know the president makes mistakes, but we feel like man, the pastor should be perfect. The pastor's the same kind of guy as all those other guys are as well. So that uh, faith, which is which is belief, you know, belief in the word of God, is equal to how well you honor your spiritual authority. What he's doing is he is priming his congregation to follow him no matter what. In fact, I can actually tell you just from experience, the people in this room who have the most faith are the ones who always refer to me as pastor. The ones who have the most faith. I mean, the ones that believe what the word of God says without without any, you know, argument or anything like that. So, just, and so when you read the Bible, it's interesting to me, when God wanted to deliver, when he wanted to, to speak the Ten Commandments into the lives of two million people, he didn't do it himself. He did it through Moses. That, that's so funny to me. God could have easily just presented himself in front of every all the Israelites. Here's the Ten Commandments, you know, and have Charles and Heston move out of the way. I got this, and God just does it all on his own. But he didn't. He used a fallible. He used a man who was a murderer. He spoke through a murderer to direct two million of his people. This is really, really big, okay? You may not agree with that authority. You might not like the way the president does things. You might not like the way your boss does things. You might not like the way your husband, who's head of the household, does things. You might not like it, but that's not the point. The point is, is that God allowed that person to be in that position. God allowed that person to be put in that place. Now, there's good news and bad news. Here's the good news, is you can leave that authority. Uh, if you don't like the, the, the boss, you can get a different job. If you don't like the president, you can move to Canada if you want to. Uh, if you don't like the pastor, you can go to try to find a better church. You won't be able to find one, but you can try all day long, okay? That's the good news. Here's the bad news is, is if God called you to that authority, then he expects you to obey with a good attitude. So that announcement about his wife was a month after he did this sermon. So many red flags here. I mean, his beliefs about family and marriage are obviously not great and do not lead to great situations. What he's saying is used to get people who are being exploited to submit. If you're called to this church and you leave, then you're not obeying God. In the announcement, one of the first things he tells his congregation is to continue going to church, serving, and giving. He asked his congregation to do that before he even asked them to like pray for them. I also found it interesting that he asked his church to process this within isolation. He asked them to leave silently and not talk about it outside of the church. The situation as a whole is very suspicious, and after you understand his theological beliefs about authority submission, it is very concerning. At this point, we are quite literally just letting the devil right into the church and leading the church. I do not believe we should let everybody become a pastor. You should not just be able to easily go get a degree and just call yourself a pastor. You have to be called to be a pastor. In my opinion, you need to be called. If you are not called, please do not step foot in a college and try to call yourself a pastor just because you want to do it. No. You need to be called to do it. And everybody forgets the devil knows scripture too. So just because these people are sitting here saying scripture at you, they can be just as evil. And this is not the first time we have heard anything about like cheating in the church and all this stuff. In my own city, like the church literally down the street from me at my old well, down the street from my old church. There was a pastor, he literally slept with so many people in the congregation, he gave AIDS to a lot of them, to almost majority of the congregation. When that hit the news, ooh, I would have never told anybody I went to that church if I went to that church. Because that is embarrassing, for one. For two, were any of y'all actually coming here for the word? Was was anybody here for the word? Or were y'all all here to be little Jezebels? Because what was actually going on? in that church so y'all y'all need to be careful um as soon as y'all find out that people are in the church like this they need to be kicked out i know my old church if they found out you cheated because my cousin got kicked out of the church they found out she cheated on her husband she got kicked out as she should because what are you doing you you can't be doing that and especially up in the church and especially if you have a high position in the church you should not be able to be doing this because you're going to lead other people astray if they see that you're doing this and you're supposed to know better. You're supposed to be saved at this point and have a connection with God and be higher spiritually. You can't be coming up in here like you're not even a baby Christian at that point. You're just sinning. You're, you're just a sinner. But y'all need to stop letting everybody into the church. Stop letting everybody lead you. When you go to a church, make sure you're paying attention to the pastor. What is he preaching? Do you believe everything that they're saying? All the ideologies? What are their morals? What is this church about? Which is why I kind of like that they have the new members classes because you are able to go and learn about the church and you can find out more about them and what they actually believe in and what do they stand on. But all this... Mm -mm. 
No. And if people, if you know that your pastor has something like this going on and you choose to stay at this church, you are also part of the problem. Why are you here? Why are you there? Are you trying to be next in line for him? Like, why are you there? There's nothing he could preach to me about. There's nothing he can say to me because what are you doing, sir? What What are you doing? And then this other pastor with his wife, he had absolutely no emotion while saying that. I know everybody grieves differently, but you think he would have some sense of emotion and just to be like, just get up and silently leave. Like, excuse me? Excuse, I would have been looking around like, did anybody else just hear what he just said? You just want me to calmly leave out the door like this is just another Sunday? I. Hopefully his wife will be able to get justice. And I think this man has some serious issues. I do believe some people are truly possessed. I don't know why we stopped doing exorcisms either because I truly believe in exorcism because there are some people well exorcism and deliverance I think some people need deliverance and I think some people need a step further and, and they need an exorcism because there are a lot of people who are possessed by demons like even if you watch some of those court videos I remember watching a murderer and he was just going on and on yelling in the courtroom and he was just acting extremely crazy and I'm like if y'all do a mental test on this man he's probably not going to come back mentally ill but you could clearly see he was possessed this I was like this man is clearly possessed and he needs some deliverance there is something that has taken over him this is not this man this is not a mental issue we need to separate the two there are some people with mental issues and then there are some people who are truly possessed and because nobody believes this is real, we've had so many movies and we just think, oh, that's just for the scary movies. Possession is only in the scary movies. Exorcism. Oh, that's so funny. I don't know why they did that in the past. Obviously, they did it for a reason. And we need to go back to it. Like I said, the devil's biggest accomplishment is making y'all think he is not real. That is all my commentary for today. Please let me know down in the comments below what are your thoughts on this whole situation. And if you like this video, please give it a like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one.